Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Getting back to work on the Cobra in this video. Uh, when we left off, I'd gone over kind of the fuel system, cooling, a few other things that I needed to uh, get some parts ordered for so I can proceed and uh, get moving along with getting this thing up and running. So I uh, have gone online, ordered all the parts I need or gone to the hardware store and gotten what I need. So uh, everything is on the way or has been received. Uh, so we can go ahead and get to work on the car uh, working with uh, the parts that I have and uh, once the other stuff comes and we'll proceed uh, with those things. All right first thing I want to address before I dig in is the lower radiator hose. Uh, as you can see here it's two-part hose consists of a factory Mustang lower hose and then it's spliced into what I believe is like a 1983 Buick Century hose. This is a hose that uh, Factory 5 used to provide with their kits I've searched online. This hose is no longer available, or at least it is on back order for an unknown number of time. I've found a couple alternate part numbers, uh, but nothing's out there. So in doing that searching, I did locate what is a single hose that will replace this whole assembly. It's from a Dodge Ram, can't remember what year, but it's Dayco part number 71713. I believe it's an upper hose for the Ram. So I've gone ahead, ordered that, that is due in. Uh, only thing I'll need to do is transfer the springs over. You can see I already have one out and then there is still one in the uh, little Z-bend portion that I haven't pulled out yet. So hopefully from what I've read, that one hose will replace these two. That way I will have a new hose underneath here. And yeah, like I said, I can just put the two springs in the new hose and should be good to go. So that is due here hopefully in the next few days. And uh, once I receive it, I will know for sure. Next on the list is the belt. I did get the third one in and it does appear third time will be a charm. That's the part number I used. Um, went ahead, it's gonna be hard to tell right now, but I did just a quick drape it over the water pump crank and it's almost on the alternator pulley and I do have the expander on the uh, pulley bracket actually almost all the way out from when I was trying to tighten up with the other one so I just need to loosen it up a little bit and I should be able to get that belt on so I believe we will have a win at this point in time with this new belt so uh, fingers crossed I'll go ahead and get that uh, put together. Well, how's that for timing? Right as I was signing off, I heard the postal truck come up, and here we go. Got all my fuel system parts from Summit. Uh, so I got a 6AN wrench, an 8AN wrench, and then I have the fittings I need. There should be uh, two 6AN 90s, one 8AN 90, and one 6AN um, straight fitting. And that will be everything I need to hook up to the regulator and then connect it to the uh, fuel rail. And then I also have a length of uh, 6 a.m. line which will go from the regulator to the fuel rail because that's the size fitting that is on the fuel rail So I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at some stuff and make sure it's right And then I can get back to the belt and this right here was the biggest thing I was concerned with and wanted to make sure that this fitting would clear the Overflow tank which it looks like I will have plenty of room Between the fitting and the tank so it should be okay. Well, I wouldn't say plenty of room, but enough room to make it work. So good to go there uh, so I can proceed. All right, so it's been a few days and I have received all of the parts that I had ordered. Uh, there you can see actually, this is the alternate hose, the Dayco 71713 that's recommended next to what was pulled out of the car. Um, I mean, you can see it's a little shorter here. And it's a little off there, but I mean, I was messing with it and with, you know, doing a little twist on it, it might actually work. So we'll see. Um, if not, I can possibly extend it and, you know, put a splice in it. I've got the pipe in here, the splice pipe. I could use that if I needed to, um, you know, just split this one, splice it as necessary. So got that. And then there you can see the upper hose, which that's the same part that's already on the car, but it, it does have... A splice in it there as you can see and then this is meant to you know work with the uh, uh, the overflow tank the uh, purge tank whatever you want to call it and then yeah I've got my clamps I've got some heater hose I've got the it's a Ford designed distributor coil clamp that's meant to mount to the head so um, found that that's made for like more classic Mustangs so hopefully that will work uh, so yeah so got you know, a lot of stuff here that I can mess around with and hopefully resolve some of these parts and systems and, and get this thing uh, back together. 
All right, so first thing is back to the saga of the belt. Um, this is the 940 length that I had ordered. It's on, as you can see. Problem is, I tightened the turnbuckle that I have all, as far as it would go until it gets to the point where it hits the header because, as you can see there, they're right next to each other, the flange and the alternator, and I can't get it tight enough. So I'm close. Um, so I looked online, this is a 940, they have a 925, they have a 930, they have a 935. I'm thinking I might go with a 930, and you can see here what the deflection is. Um, it's pretty much the turnbuckle is out, or is, you know, tight. So it's pretty much as loose as I'll be able to get it. So, I mean, I figure if I get a 930, I should be, should be able to get it on here, because the biggest I've had previously was a 915 and I could almost get it on with really fighting with it. So I'm thinking a 925 should be the final answer on this. So I'm gonna go ahead and order a 925 or 925 five rib belts and hopefully I can put this behind me. So I'm gonna get that order placed now and move on to the next. All right, so while I'm waiting on the fourth uh, belt, Went ahead, did a little bit of housekeeping work that I've been meaning to get around to. Added this clamp here just to hold the wiring up against the frame. Put a little zip tie over here just to keep everything tied together. That way nothing's rubbing on the steering shaft or the control arm here. Uh, so I just wanted to make sure there was going to be no issues there. Uh, next on the list, I'm going to grab that new lower uh, coolant hose. See if I can make it work and uh, be able to knock that off the list. All right, well, it's been about an hour of me wrestling with this hose. Tried stretching the end using a trailer ball uh, from a hitch. That's what the article online that I saw said to do. Um, and tried putting a tiny little bit of grease on the inside. It's not gonna fit over the water pump. Also, the way that I have my remote oil filter in this car when it was built, didn't really work so well with that either, trying to fit it in that space. I have a feeling I just need to go back to the correct hoses, the, you know, the correct Mustang lower, and then I mean, maybe I can use this end since they no longer make, and I can't find the one that was supplied by uh, Factory 5 that does that little zigzag. Maybe I can just kind of get a splicer, use, you know, use this bit, and then go from there. So. Um, yeah, that's where I'm at. I'm probably going to order a factory Mustang lower hose and uh, a good splice because mine looks to be a little beat up and it's got like a hole in it from coolant or something. I don't know. Um, but anyway, that's where I'm at on the lower hose. This, you know, 71713 by itself does not seem like it's going to work. All right, and just for peace of mind, I did measure this. The, the uh, inside diameter is one and a half. The outer diameter of the water pump I'm trying to put that on is one and seven eighths. So that's that's a big amount to try and make up. We're talking three eighths of an inch to try and stretch this. So that's why I'm thinking it's not going to work. Um, I did look at the lower um, or the the lower radiator port that the other end would need to go in, and that's one and three quarter. Whereas again, this is one and a half. I might be able to stretch this. To make it work so yeah i might be able to just cut this hose that way it's not a complete loss and then join it with a factory mustang um lower so i'm going to do a little bit of searching online see what i can find as far as a splice connector and hoses are and i'll figure it out all right real quick since i'm on hold with the uh, lower hose did a little more cleanup uh this wire harness that was dangling down i went ahead and just put a couple of clamps here, here, and there. Uh, they're in the lower radiator brace, obviously not into any of the piping or anything. So, uh, but that's what that tab is there for. You can go ahead and mount stuff to it. So now that is no longer dangling and that solves that problem. All right, and on to the next, messing around with the coil. And this is the bracket that I got. You can see it there, I bought it off Amazon. It's labeled as like a bracket for a Ford F-150 or a Mustang. It's gonna work. Um, there's a hole right there in the cylinder head. I just measured how depth, 
or how deep it is so I can know what kind of bolt I need to get. Uh, but I can use that hole and use this bracket and I'll have the coil mounted right there. The line's long enough so that should work so I can get that mounted and then I'll just need to extend the wires off of the harness for the EFI system. All right, continuing to work on kind of cleaning up and prepping things. Uh, remove the old coolant overflow can. See it sitting there. Um, it was on the passenger side, tucked under the body, but with the new degas surge, whatever you want to call it, tank, its overflow is actually on the driver's side. So I'll probably get a different style bottle and tuck it up over there. So I'll figure that when the time comes along. I did go ahead, I went and ordered some bolts. I needed 7 16 14 by one inch uh, for the coil bracket. So that's ordered along with a one and a half inch aluminum hose coupler and a factory, well, a Deco uh, OEM replacement lower hose for a Mustang. So those parts are on order from Amazon, should have them in a couple of days, and then I can go ahead and try and tackle that lower hose issue. All right, so next thing on my list that I'm looking at is the fuel system. As you can see, I went ahead and got one of the fittings installed on uh, the feed line that's gonna go to the engine. Uh, what I'm using to cut lines is a set of cable cutters. I got these off of Amazon. Um, that's you know, a big debate on what the best way to do it is because the, uh, obviously you don't wanna have any frays because that makes your life hell. Um, problem I have is, you know, the feed and return lines are already hooked up to the fuel tank and I don't want to have to drop the fuel tank to remove those. So I can't use a death wheel, uh, for uh, risk of blowing myself up if I spark and there's vapors coming out of those hoses. So, uh, I know the death wheel is what a lot of people prefer using, you know, an angle cut off grinder to, to just cut them cause it makes a nice clean cut. But I did, you know, I tried a couple other methods and it was a little bit frayed. So I did use these and cut. Um, the small portion of the end off that I'd been messing with, they cut nice and clean. And all I did was kind of roll the hose on a flat surface just to make sure there were no frays. And I was able to put the, the uh, piece that goes over the hose on very easily, this piece. It pushed right on. I just, you know, did a little twist and push, went right on, and then I was able to screw that in, no problem. So um, anyway, so fuel system issue. So I was originally thinking about mounting it on like the fender well here or on this brace here, the fuel pressure regular that is. But my worry is the exhaust is right there. And I really don't want to have a fuel pressure regulator sitting right over top of the exhaust. The optimal place would be on the firewall. So what my debate is, is I'm looking at the fuel rails that are on this EFI system. And it does look like I would in theory, oh wait, no I wouldn't, because the crossover for the, uh, the, the rails is gonna be in line with where the distributor is, so never mind. All right, so I am stuck with this orientation. Um, so I basically just need to try and find the best spot to put that regulator that's gonna keep it from getting too hot. So uh, that's the debate I'm having right now, where I'm gonna mount that, uh, where it's not gonna be over the hot exhaust headers and side pipe there so uh back to that drawing board all right so looking at everything and where it is all located i think the best bet is going to be to mount that regulator back here on the firewall um i'll probably actually just put it like dead center or something like that uh, i should have enough length in the existing feed and return lines from the fuel tank to get it back there and i do have enough length with uh this six millimeter or um, six an feed line that i have that goes to the fuel rail um, it's going to be interesting just because I'll have, you know, the two hoses going to the heater running across here. I'm going to have that fuel feed line running under there, but I should be able to make it work. Um, but yeah, I think that's just going to be the best bet. I really don't want to have the regulator sitting over top of hot exhaust. Uh, it's just, no, it's not going to be good for the longevity of the regulator diaphragm, not going to be good for the fuel system. Uh, so I think this is going to be the best bet. So. That being said, looks like I'm gonna have to pull the air box back off so I have access back there and can drill holes and do what I need to do to get everything mounted, start getting lines cut and adapted and all that fun stuff and uh, go from there. So uh, I think I am gonna end the video here. Uh, I'll pick up next one with you know starting to work with this fuel system. Hopefully the uh, new lines I've ordered for the lower radiator uh, inlet. I can get those in, go ahead and try and get that figured out. 
and just continue assembling the car. So uh, if you like what you're seeing, please hit like, please hit subscribe, please hit the notification bell. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section. I do read them and I will reply. Thank you for watching and have a great day.